grooving in G. And I'm now moving into the fifth part of my audio finder tutorial series. Today I just want to do a practical guide on using audio finder to make a song in logic. I think it'll be useful just to see how someone goes about this from a music production standpoint. I'll try and talk as much as I can through what I'm doing and to show you all the tips and tricks that I've kind of learnt over the years. I also want to go over a few different workflows so you can kind of see which ones best suit your own style of making music. So to begin with, this is a method I do quite a lot. You can see I've got a couple of examples here which I've done for old projects. One is like this Pete Tran and Renoise track. I basically curate a playlist in Audio Find of all the things I think I'm going to want for a tune before I start making it. You often hear other producers saying that it's good to separate your sound design sessions from your production sessions and your sampling sessions and creating sessions. So when you're actually producing, all you're doing is letting your creativity flow and you're not getting bogged down having to look for kick samples and whatever else you think you're going to need. So that's why this can be a really useful way to kind of speed up your production sessions is when you're bored on a Sunday night and you, you can't think of what to do, jump into Audio Finder and just create yourself a kind of a custom pack. Okay, so let's start with just creating a new list and starting to kind of add stuff and I'll show you kind of the quick ways to get files into a playlist or the ways I, I think are the, are the best. First you create a new empty sidebar group which I've shown you in previous tutorials but we'll just go over it quickly. So you right click on any of these areas on the left hand side, new sidebar group and that's just loading now. So now you've got a new group. Now you can drag that around. You've got to remember to drag in the left side of it, otherwise it won't let you place it in. So once you go to the left corner, you can place it in. I've already done this before and then I've called it tutorial. And then in tutorial, click on that new empty list. This will take you up to your save lists menu. The tutorial two and then you can drag it back down and then to add the final touch which I do my you don't really need to go this far but tutorial icon I quite like having everything as nice icons a good thing to do here is to if you go to transparent if you go tools transparent then the they won't have any backgrounds to the images you see this little checkered box when you paste it in you won't get any white around the back so it just makes them look a bit better now I've got my tutorial kit. Lots of people make their packs in different ways or start from different points. I quite often go for trying to find a sample of some sort, especially if I'm doing hip hop, and then start building my drums around it. So I'm going to go Looperman. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, you can either now, which was what I was going to do naturally, is just to drag from this folder into my tutorial list or potentially a quicker workflow which someone showed me quite recently on this YouTube channel is you can actually just tick this bin button here and now this has come into my favorites bin. So to create a list you can just go through so it's a really nice drum break there and So I'm kind of comparing the two, and I think these this rows might work in some capacity. Maybe not that. Mm. See, it's a bit more kind of like badass, these, and these are kind of like more chilled. potentially. Nice vocal chords. There's loads of good stuff on Looperman if you just go and have a dig around. Uh, it's a really good place to find samples. 
So as I've been going and the files that I've liked, I've been clicking this bin icon. Now, if you can't see this bin icon, you've got to come your column view options and then you click bin at the top. What it does when I click this item is it adds it to my favorites bin. So now all these files that I liked have got this tick on. So then I can select all of these and then I can bring them down and to get rid of them from the favorites bin you actually just delete them out you don't need to click all these tick boxes if you just delete them out you can now see in this tutorial list that all these files have now gone from the favorites bin and dragging them back in will actually you'll see that the, this tick will become highlighted again so so that's how that kind of functions that bin tick box which is actually quite useful now we've got a playlist we kind of like, it's in the right genre, we've kind of got en enough stuff definitely to have a start of making a track. So let's load up Logic. Okay, so I'm in Logic and I think we wanted to start with that old school. Make this the basis of our song. I'm just clicking and dragging from Audio Finder straight into Logic and that, that works just fine. The other way you can do it, if you set it up in your preferences, the door for spot button, it only, this only works with Pro Tools and Logic, but what it will do is if I put my playhead here and I click on this sample and I spot it, it's put it in right in my playhead. So that's really handy for movie people, more than production, I think, to get stuff coming in at a specific time, but that's how that function works. So the, what I might do is bring this down and take off the kick of this one, so it's just a hat. Dun 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 it there. So we got now... So we've got the loop. I don't really know what key this song is. Now, some of you will obviously be way better than me at music theory and will be able to hear it and tell. I'm sure some people will have no idea of music theory, but if you're like me and you have a little bit of an idea, but you, you can use some tools to kind of help you out along the way, then this, this plugin by Hornet called Song Key MK3. Now, it's, it's about... 12 euros I think at the moment it, but it goes on sale for like five pounds or five euros so it's it gets re really cheap and it's really handy because you can have this detecting the output of audio finder and it's like a live key detection a quick little useful bit of information is this bring order unit to front which is alt and the tilde key but I'm just trying to see where the root note is and what key it is If I go up an octave, it's telling me it's G sharp major. So what I try and avoid sometimes is going too deep into the theory of the samples. The trick I use much more often is to just fiddle about on my keyboard, playing the playing a sampler against a drum beat. And if I'm trying to fit this, what I'll start doing is just trying to find notes that sound like they're in the right key or in the right area. I think this this um, D sharp that I found that I've got here, which I don't know, I'm playing D sharp on my keyboard, but it'll be it won't be playing a D sharp. It's sounding good now. If I go seven semitones up my keyboard, I'm playing a fifth above it. So I've already found two notes. So what I've kind of done there is just played a one, five, four progression from that sample. OK, 
Okay, kind of cool there. So let's go another one. So I'm still using... See, I thought when I originally heard this, I thought I'd be able to just chop off this. That's obviously the wrong key now. I'm just randomly kind of dragging stuff in at the moment from Audio Finder into Logic. I'm feeling like it's A, it's the wrong key. I don't think I've matched them up well enough, so why don't we go route this the other way? You can hear. When I just... Got it into the right key there. The, ba the basses kind of like went on top of each other, like if I do it again. That's obviously way off. Like that first note of the bass, you can hear the way the waveforms are lining up, that it's much tighter. If I go one up, it'll sound weird again. When you hit the right one, you can usually just tell instantly, but the bass is definitely a good sign. So yeah, so the reason it was kind of working before is because it was a fourth below, which is five semitones, but it just wasn't the right key. So I'm dragging from Audio Finder, into this left bit of logic and I'm getting straight into the sampler. Now, I just want to layer this first note. It's like a one fat A. I'm going crazy. I'm so let's just take the first two. I'm going crazy. Okay, so I don't know if this is going to work, but I'm just going to send it to a delay and a reverb. I'm feeling, I'm feeling hazy, drunk off the time. I'm going. Okay, so I kind of got to a good enough place in the song where it shows the kind of beginning, a bit of structure. I think it's a good example of what you could kind of achieve just with getting all your samples together and then just going simple audio techniques like reversing, transposing, adding reverb and delay, chopping up, and then your sampler and logic. Yeah, so I'll play the song for you now. So there you go. I think a lot of the battle with making these kind of songs out of samples is just getting everything in the right key and sounding nice together. Sometimes it's impossible and you, you got to realise you're actually just going for the wrong sample and you got to try something else. Yeah, don't be afraid to kind of fiddle around. You'll have to weather the storm of hearing lots of kind of wrong key matches as you're transposing them up and down the keyboard, but that's kind of part of sample-based music production. I think I'll quickly just go over some of the tips that I showed you. One was just as I was working in my playlist, I was just added bits of information to the notes area as I was going. And it's this was just a bit of key information, but you can kind of write anything in here that you want to store that's relevant to that specific sample. Another thing I did was show you the, the Hornet song key. I want to just put a bit of a disclaimer here that it is really handy to use and you can have it running in the background, but it will make Audio Finder function a bit weirdly sometimes. It takes a little bit of the snap out of some of the samples. It can be a little bit strange when you're transposing because it's obviously having to fire that information through Hornet before it goes out to your speakers. And also, for some weird reason, it won't play samples that have anything other than 44.1 sample rate. It just actually won't play them through Hornet. But if I get rid of Hornet, then it starts playing everything fine. So 
whilst the Hornet is amazing and it's great to work in your door and it's useful that you can have it in Audio Finder, it does play up a little bit. One thing about Audio Finder I would love to see is having the major minor key options here. I think the key detection system, the one in Audio Finder, is it's just looking for the strongest fundamental in that sample. Now that is useful, but it's not quite as advanced as some of these other programs like Mixed in Key are, or even the one I showed you, Hornet Song Key, which can give you that kind of live display of what chords are playing and the actual song key as opposed to the strongest fundamental frequency, which can often be different. So if you've made it this far, uh, well done, congratulations. And yeah, look forward to uh, putting out more Audio Finder content later this week.